right, good morning. Um, playing around with technical stuff. We'll see how this goes. Um, I'm, let's get this class started. Okay. Ta da! Good morning. Welcome to Yoga in Small Spaces. I'm Cheryl, and my trusty sidekick T is here for a class this morning. Um, I was trying to get my Bluetooth to work, didn't seem to want to co cooperate, so hopefully the sound is okay, and we'll see how it goes. So, for today's class, we are doing a functional flow class, and the whole purpose of functional flow is going into poses that will help strengthen and build mobility and being aware and how we're moving those muscles and joints. How is our skeleton moving? How is the brain connecting with the movement? So get a nice comfortable spot wherever you are. You're going to need a mat. You're going to need yoga blocks possibly. And you are going to need a blanket possibly. So have those close by. And now we're going to get started. I'm like, I'm starting a little bit late because I was trying to play around with the uh, software and it just, hopefully it's working. I might have to do both voiceover later. All right. So sitting in Sukhasana, or if you want your legs extended, or if you want to sit on your heels, we're just going to take a few moments here before we get fully moving uh, to have uh, awareness of the body. So hands are resting on the legs, shoulders away from the ears. And we're gonna bring awareness into the pelvis. So what I want you to do is a gentle movement of your pelvis front and back. So you're feeling this more in the lower spine, the lumbar and sacral. Almost feel like you're untucking and tucking the tailbone. Even though this is a little micro movement, see what you're noticing within the spine and the hips and of course the pelvis. Is your spine wanting to lock up in one part, in one point? Or do you feel a tightness in the hips? For me right now it's morning and I've been pretty active the last few days so my hips are tight and my lower back, more into my sacroiliac uh, uh, muscles and stuff. They're really, really tight. We're gonna build on this, all right? So bring your torso nice and straight, shoulders away from the ears. And I want you to do a nice rounding, having your hands on the knees, rounding the shoulders forward, tucking your chin in towards the chest. And then, you're going to inhale a beautiful arch. It's like a seated cat and cow. Let's do through two more of these. You're going to round the spine. Arch. One more. Round the spine. And arch. There we go. And bring your hand down to the mat. Extend your left arm up. You're going to exhale over to the right. I apologize for my words. I'm finding a hard time. I'm having a hard time finding them this morning. Oh, dear me. You're going to come back up. Release your left hand. Extend the right. Just feel that stretch. Come on back up, releasing. Now, from here, we're gonna do a nice, gentle connection with the breath. So you can have your eyes open, you can close them. You're gonna inhale through the nose, so you can expand the belly. And exhale, pull it in. Breath in. Breath out. Go a little bit deeper into your breath. With this connection, 
connection of your breath. I'm going to remind you through the whole practice to breathe. And the more at ease you are with your breath through the flow, the more fluid the movement will be, the more ease into the, into the muscles. Leave the eyes closed or you can open the eyes. And now I'm going to go into muscle activation. I want you to bring your shoulders up tight towards the ears on a breath in. Tight, 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 tight. And release. I'm going to do that three more times. Tight the shoulders. Hold the breath. Hold the tense. And chin. And release. Inhale. Release. One more. Release. I'm going to have to do that to the arms. Arms out. Wide, 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 wide. And release. Extend the arms out. Take a nice deep breath. Open your arms wide. And breathe out. One more. Arms out. Ready? Deep breath in. Exhale, release. Do three shoulder circles in each direction. Feel the movement of your shoulders. Now go forward. So if you start going forwards, go backwards. And release. Kind of make your way to hands and knees to tabletop. So in tabletop, half the knees in line with the hips, hands and shoulders, hands and wrists in line with the shoulders. Push through the shoulders, feel that, and then release. Push through the hands, feel your shoulder blades pull away from each other, and release. One more. And release. We're slowly building movement here with purpose. I want you to tuck in your belly to bring your back in nice alignment. You're going to inhale and table. Exhale to child's pose, the lasana. Come back to table. Breathe in. Tuck the toes, downward dog. You can pedal the feet here. Sorry if the audio is not the greatest. The mic was not working this morning. Now exhale and downward dog. Here we go. Inhale, table. Exhale, child. Table. Downward dog. Table. Child. We're going to add to this. Come to table. Downward dog. Plank. Downward dog, table, child, table, downward dog, plank, downward dog, table, Child's pose.
making your way to downward dog. You can play around with the feet, legs, see where they're most comfortable. I like to have my feet hip width apart. We're going to move into a nice little plank series here. I want you to shift your weight forward coming into plank. For me, I'm just going to be able to move my hands a little bit forward. My wrists are in line with my shoulders. Raising my sit bones just a little bit to protect the lower back and tightening the glutes and the core. Downward dog. We're going to build on our plank. The goal here is to see where our strength is within our shoulders and our core. In plank, we're going to see if we can hold it for one minute. Shift your weight forward and hold, but don't hold your breath. If it's too much in a four-point plank, bring the knees down. Push through the hands, shoulders away from the ears. You can feel your shoulder blades pull away from each other. Keep that glute nice and tight. Almost there. Make sure your butt's not slouching down. Downward dog. Come to the knees to table. Child's pose. Bring the arms alongside the body, palms up, shoulders away from the ears. Slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. You're going to come to table. Tuck the toes under, downward dog. And you're going to tippy toe your feet forward, coming into a forward fold. Feel a release in the lower back. Allow the arms to dangle. Push the heels into the ground. My neck is tight this today. Tight, I can't even talk. Tight today. <laughs> oh dear. And then slowly roll up one vertebra at a time until you come up to mountain pose. Shoulders away from the ears. You're going to make your way into Tadasana and just have yourself at the top of your mat because we're going to go into this nice little flow series here. So, standing in Tadasana. So remember that muscle activation we did at the beginning of the class. I want you to do the same thing in Tadasana. So the palms are facing to the wall in front of you, shoulders away from the ears. And just kind of just stand like a limp noodle. Don't do anything with the legs. And then you're going to rock front to back on the feet until you find your centering. Now push your feet into the ground, tighten the glutes to support the lower back. And release. Push, tighten, and release. One more time. Push, tighten the glutes, and release. We're going to go into a nice knee raise. So I want you to root your left foot into the mat. You're going to raise your right leg up, knee bent, right foot flex. Hands can be on the hips, in front of the heart. Nice, smooth breath. 
feel like you're waving from side to side, the body's on steady, you can lower that foot down a little bit. You find where you find the most balance and control. Make sure you have a drishti, a focal point forward, slightly down. You're gonna allow yourself to open up the right knee to the side. This is my tight side. I got really, really tight sacroiliac muscles within my right glute here. Nice, smooth breath. Bring that knee back forward. We're gonna add a twist here. So left hand, right leg, you can extend your right arm to the back. You can look just forward in the twist or to the side, or you can rotate, look back to that right hand. You choose. You're gonna come back to center, extend that right leg, point the toes, flex, point, flex. From here, you can set the leg down and come back into airplane, warrior three, or swoop the leg back. So we've gotten into raising up and nice tilt to the pelvis and the hip on the right. Then we've opened up an external rotation to the hip. Then we've got an internal rotation with the twist. And come on down to a high lunge. Here we go. Open up the arms, the Shiva arms. So I'm saying this, and we're gonna do a nice opening to the chest. Feel that beautiful stretch on the right side of the pelvis. If you need to play around with the width, if you need to set down that back leg, go ahead. opening up to warrior two. So now we're opening up the whole hip. Here we got the pelvis, the groin, feet are pushing, tighten your glutes, arms are strong. Once they're tired today, then just bring them down to the hips. Smooth breath. We're going to straighten that front knee and we're going to come into pyramid. So you can play with the angle of that back foot, turn in a little bit more, shift your hips so your torso is almost in line with that front leg. You have the hands on the hips and you're going to slowly hinge at the hips. And if you want, locks for the hands to come down on. Like I said, right hip is super tight. My glutes are tight. Smooth breath. Give yourself two more breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Breath in. Breath out. You're going to slowly come back up. Turn your feet in the same direction. We're going to come into that nice wide-legged forward fold. So your feet are pushing or pulling them out apart from either side. Hands are on the hips. You're going to come into your forward fold. When I get my hands down, that's when I kind of want to play with the distance of my feet. Gently bend my left leg, come into a side lunge, getting it within the inner thigh, between the thigh and the hamstring, then I'm gonna rotate right foot so the toes are pointing up. Set that foot down, go to my side lunge on the other side, first leaving my left foot down, and then lifting and rotating the toes up.
bringing that left foot down, turning my body to the other side. I'm going to step my left foot forward, slowly roll up, and now I'm back into Dasana. So noticing sensations through the body, how's the right side feeling toward compared to the left. We've worked mostly the right side on that sequence. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the left. So root your right foot into the ground, hands to prayer or on the hips, come into that knee raise, left foot flexed. Open up the left knee to the side. Get a beautiful external rotation in that left hip. You might feel the activation in that left glute. Bring that knee back to center. Right hand to the outer leg. Left arm back. Bring yourself back to center, extend the leg, point the toes, flex, point, flex, shift to warrior three. You can have the hands at prayer, you can have the arms alongside the body out in airplane arms, you can even have the arms out in front. Bring that back foot down, coming into your high lunge. Nice, smooth breath. Open up those hips a little bit more, coming to your warrior two. Play around with the distance of the feet. is soft. Straighten the front knee, but don't lock it. Have the hands on the hips. Rotate that back foot a little bit more. Shift your hips forward, but don't force it. Don't go to a point where the muscles are tightening and these bones, sorry, not muscles, but the bones are compressing against each other. And you're going to come into pyramid. So remember, if you want the blocks, have the blocks underneath the hands for a smooth breath. Yep, this is my tighter side. And I feel this within my right hip going into the glute and lower back. And then you're going to walk yourself to center. Bring your torso up, toes point in the same direction. You're going to come into that wide-legged forward fold. So this is where I bring my hands down either onto blocks or onto the floor. Hands come to the mat. Head relaxes. Smooth breath. I'm going to walk my hands to the left, turn my right toes up, get that stretch, bring that foot down, change sides, rotate that left foot up, come on back, heel toe those feet together. You're now in a standing forward fold, rolling up one vertebra at a time. Shoulders away from the ears. You're going to make your way down onto your mat so you can put in a flow. Whatever feels good.
coming on onto your knees, sitting your sit bones back to your heels. I'm going to go into a little mini vinny working within table or wild table. So you know wild thing, it comes up with one arm at a time. We're going to work on wild table, so then we're opening up the chest equally. Going into a boat, then into bridge, back into boat, back into wild table. So this is a nice little flow. So make your way to your sit bones. Bring your hands behind you. For some of us, you might like the fingertips pointing towards the sit bones. Others, you might have the fingertips pointing away. So you're gonna exhale fully. Inhale into a table. Come back down, sit bones connect, boat. So I'm coming into a nice easy boat. You can have feet down if you need to, feet up, you can have the legs straight if you want, arms up overhead. I'm coming with the bent knee today and the arms forward. Feet down, lie down, bridge. Sit bones down, boat. Table. Boat. Bridge. We're going to do that two more times. Boat. Use that core. Wild. Boat. So we're tackling the psoas and the hips here and also the shoulders are coming up into the upside down table as you can see your upside table. Boat. Wild. And release. Lay yourself down. We're going to come into threading the needle, giving you that connection of the opening of the hips. How much mobility do you have? Are you feeling any muscle tightness, any compression? Have you lost mobility in that area in a while? And this is all just to bring awareness to the hips and the pelvis. You're going to take your right ankle, cross it over the left. This may be enough for you. You may just want to stay here, have a gentle push onto that right thigh. You're going to lift the left leg up if you choose, come a little bit closer. This may be enough. You can take the hands, thread them through to the hamstring or to the left shin. So here, I'm flexing my left foot, and I'm giving a gentle opening. It's almost like I'm gently pushing my right leg, right knee opened. I'm not allowing it to compress in towards my chest and my belly. Smooth breath. the shin or hamstring if you have them, on across the legs, bring the legs down to the right and turn yourself over to the right. I know you, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm extending my arms out fully here, so I'm like, like clasping or clapping like a clamshell. And from here, I'm slowly opening my left arm up and I'm watching my left hand. Different way of coming into a recline spinal twist. I have my shoulder activated. I'm pulling it away from my ear. I feel the shoulder blade, left shoulder blade, activating muscle in, going in towards the spine. I'm allowing my hand and arm to float here. And I'm looking at the hand. I'm going to inhale. Exhale a little bit further down. Inhale. Exhale. One more, inhale, exhale down. 
So you can continue looking at the left hand. You allow that muscle to relax. Your arm and shoulder blade may continue to float. So we're getting that work into the shoulder joint, the shoulder muscles, all the, rota the rotator cuff area. <clears throat> Bring your neck in line with the spine, bring the knees back up to center, set those feet down. We're going to thread the needle on the other side. Left ankle over right thigh, bringing the right foot up if that you have that mobility. If not, keep the foot down, choosing if this is enough, or you can bring the hands in around that hamstring, the right hamstring, or the right shin. Flex the right foot, give that gentle opening to the left knee out, especially if you feel like it's compressing in. It doesn't mean it has to fully open, but you're just activating that muscle. Smooth breath. I'm gonna release the thread. Release the legs. Rotate yourself over as if you're in the fetal position, almost on the left. Have your hands and arms clasped on the side. And then slowly start opening the right arm, watching that hand. Pull the shoulder away from yours. Feel that right shoulder blade go down the back towards the spine. Breathe in. Breathe in. One more inhale. And relax. Neck in line with the spine. Knees back up to center. Give yourself a beautiful spinal massage side to side. A few knee circles, maybe two to three in one direction. And then switch. There we go. make my way to the fetal position on my right side. You choose what side works best for you. And then make your way up to Sukhasana. See the cross leg position. Remember that gentle pelvic tilt we were doing at the beginning of class. So slowly Round your pelvis in, round it out. In, out, one more. In, out. Neutralize the pelvis. Bring the hands to the heart to Anjuli Mudra. Namaste Kala. Thank you for joining me for this class. If you have any questions, shoot me an email or send me a chat. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So yoga in small spaces. And I am Cheryl. Talk to you later.